Hi, Dirty Girl here with another vintage haul from the flea market. Uh, it was a beautiful day last Sunday and uh, not too crowded for a change, which is odd in the summer. Usually they're just packed, especially on a nice, cool, overcast day. It did get hot later on, but it was some nice shopping in the morning. So uh, I bought, you know, a few things. So I'm just going to get started with the jewelry and then we'll move on to other things. I got some really interesting stuff this time, I think. Uh, so first off is this Navajo bracelet. And it's um, sterling silver with lots of different multicolor gemstones, including turquoise and lapis and uh, coral and a purple stone, and I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, and uh, it's not signed, but it does look, the style suggests that it's Navajo. And it's not too awfully old. It's got a lobster clasp. But I just thought it was very pretty. And I paid 17 for that. And we have a turquoise ring. This is also Navajo. Really nice piece of turquoise, a very pretty color. It's unsigned and unmarked, and that I paid 14 for. Here's another little Navajo piece. It's got a malachite stone, and that I paid uh, $10 for. And it is, oh, I'm sorry, it's not, golly, it sure looks Navajo, but it's Mexican. And it's signed. Ooh, I didn't realize all that. It's got, you may even be able to see that. I'll have to figure out who that is. That looks like an interesting hallmark there. Okay. And uh, this is a sterling silver spoon ring. It's Gorham sterling. I'll have to figure out what the pattern is. That's always fun really ornate and it's heavy and I paid 14 for that. This is a very cool mid-century it's it's like moonstone I guess it's moonstone it, it has that pearly look to it but the shape of the stones is so interesting. Now this does have a bit of wear but I think it's the type of wear that I can touch up successfully with the uh, leafing pen and it'll look good as new. And it's not signed. It's um, it's very similar to the type of bracelets that Coro and Listener made around uh, the early 1960s, maybe late 1950s. Anyway, five dollars for that. Five dollars seemed to be the price. I was paying for a lot of things. I got this multi-chain necklace sure how old this is because it does it does have a hook you know one of these hook and chain which suggests more of a mid-century um, but then these kind of necklaces were pretty popular in more recent times too but I like the way this one moves and that all the how many chains it has and they're so delicate and that was five dollars This is an A. Pomerantz rhinestone brooch. It's enormous. I mean, that's a big brooch. And I like the, um, it's got aurora borealis centers on the flowers. It's in good condition. There's no missing stones. And A. Pomerantz is a, is a good maker to look for. It's good quality stuff. And I paid $8 for that. And then there was a $5 sterling silver table. <laughs> of course, I had to hit that. <laughs> so, um, I can get this straightened out. Got these cute filigree dangle earrings. And they're just marked 925. These 
very tempted to keep these because that's the kind of thing I like to wear. Well, you can see, I like to wear my dangles. <laughs> these, these earrings, incidentally, I have had, I think since high school. I got them at Casual Corner when Casual Corner was a brand new store. I think they're all out of business now. And I still wear them. Because <laughs> they're, they're light. They make a nice noise. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, I thought this was a, a pretty nice piece for $5. It is turquoise. And uh, it is marked sterling. And that looks to be probably Navajo. And this is that very popular modernist leaf design. It's kind of a heart-shaped leaf, puffy leaf. And um, it's marked 95. And then we have a little bear claw and uh, mother of pearl pendant. It's a shadow box design. And it is a real one. It is three-dimensional and hollow. And it is signed S-E. And I have not looked that up yet. But gosh, anytime you can get a signed piece of Native American jewelry for five bucks, you should get it. And then the last thing is this flower pendant. I'm going to have to buy some new chains. I'm all out of chains. But that's probably about a, a 1940s piece. And it's Mexican. And it's signed also. Signed A.S. Very, very nicely done. And I believe that is it for the jewelry. Unless you want to count this belt buckle. Belt buckles are sort of jewelry. I get a Harley Davidson brass 1970s belt buckle for uh, three dollars. It is, it's missing um, the D-ring that goes here, but I have a bunch of miscellaneous belt parts that I picked out of someone's trash, and uh, I can't help myself sometimes. It was not actually in the trash. It was in a box at the curb marked free, you know, so it's kind of trash. Um, this is a, a it's, it's dated 1979, and it's a Baron, made in Taiwan. Um, there's the back of it. Some Harley Davidson buckles go for really good money. This is not one of the ones that usually goes for big money, but I think it's awfully nice. Um, I may give this to my brother-in-law because he has a Harley, and he's so kind and supportive. Okay, um, all right, let's see. Got another Mexican pot, a little tray or casserole dish. These usually came in nested sets. This is a, a really old one. And it does have a lot of dings. I know it's got a lot of wear, but I don't see any serious, like, really noticeable chips or cracks or anything. It's just the paint has worn off a little bit. And that's usually more or less acceptable for these. Um, and I paid, uh, I forgot, $7? Something like that. Oh, let me show you. Uh, I have a couple of garage sale finds that I forgot to show. I was going to do those at the beginning. Just three items. Well, we'll count this as one item because I'm, I think I may list these together. It's a couple of lead crystal uh, candlesticks from Czech Republic. And uh, one is marked and one isn't, but I'm reasonably sure they both are lead crystal. This one is Bohemia. There's the label on it. 
and they're both in really nice condition, no chips or anything. And I got those for $2 a piece. And then also, I got a picture frame with the silver-like. <laughs> I'm sure it's not real silver, but it looks it's probably silver-plated. It looks awfully silverish. I don't know. But anyway, from the world market, so it's obviously not real old. Well, you can tell from the back that it's not real old, but picture frames just do really well. And I paid a dollar for that. Okay, so now we're back to the flea market. Uh, antique ice cream scoop has this isn't this the cutest? I thought I had a real winner here, but they're very common. <laughs> but uh, it's got an iron. I guess it's all made of iron. Or maybe this part's steel. And this part's cast iron. I'm not really sure. Um, but I just thought it was so cute. And it looks like it's got its original paint on it in really good condition. And I paid... Um, I know this was part of a big group of stuff, so I paid around 7 or $8 for it. And they don't sell for a whole lot. Also, got this little granite ware coffee pot, which I just thought the size of it was so cute. It's so tiny. Um, it's been used, but it's in... The only place it's chipped is on... is right there and a little bit on the lid, but otherwise the granite part is in good condition and I just thought that it would look really cute in a um, you know kind of a country kitchen or a, I don't know anyway and again I paid probably seven or eight dollars for that uh, oops. this is a solid brass door knocker. Need a nice big door for this. Uh, I think this is a really old one and I paid uh, 20 for it I believe. And I think I can probably sell that for around a hundred. <laughs> This is just a little glass. Uh, they told me it was a toothpick holder, but it was a buck. I figured for a buck I would get that. It's really cute. And I found a paperweight. This is still has its Murano sticker, made in Murano, Italy. Uh, it's in really beautiful condition. And this is what they call a latticino, these, when you have these little lattice-like ribbons. And uh, that's a very desirable thing to have in a paperweight. I did pay 15 for this one. I, I usually try to keep it down to 10, but uh, I think I can probably get maybe $50 for that. Maybe more. I, I haven't done a whole lot of research yet. I forget. Um, this is one of my very favorite pieces that I bought. This is a hand carved and it's got a little bit of the um, pyrography. Yeah, it does. Which is, you know, the burning, so it has the black highlights. And this is like arts and crafts era, turn of the century. Turn of the 20th century. And it is a pocket watch display box. It's lined in purple velvet. And it's just really cute. And I paid 15 for that. And um, I don't know. I th I'm thinking about a price around $45, $55, something like that. This is another one of my favorite pieces. My beloved cloisonne. This is, though, a really nice antique mirror. It's got birds on it. Makes it doubly nice. Okay, let me hold it nice and still so you can see it. Yeah, 
and the front of the mirror doesn't look so great, but at least you know it's an old one. <laughs> and, you know, you can't, it is still usable, even though it's a little bit worse for wear. But the, the cloisonne itself is in beautiful condition. And I paid 20 for that. Um, I think I can maybe get around $100 for that. Maybe. Uh, we have a purse which I thought the design of this was quite unusual, kind of a confetti, seed bead conglomeration. And uh, this is a made in Hong Kong bag. You see it's satin lined and it's pretty clean inside. It's maybe not, not completely perfect. Well, I don't know, I don't really see any obvious marks. So anyway, it's pretty nice. Um, Probably a price tag was there or something. Oops. Get off. Okay. And um, I paid $10 for that. Seems to be not shedding any beads or anything. And this, this is just a bit of a silly purchase because I paid $5 for it and I probably can't really sell it for very much because it's such a small one. Such a, but I love these little rock displays. They just make me smile. I had, my, my dad went on a business trip when I was really little, like maybe five years old, and he brought me home one of these, only it was a bigger one. And I kept that thing for years and years and years and years. I remember naming the rocks, like giving the rocks their own names, like John and Sherry and I mean I, I have no idea why I wanted to do that but I, I was really little um, so so whenever I see one of these I just have to buy it if it's at all affordable <laughs> now the ones if you get the ones like this with and they still have their uranium if they have uranium those can sell for a lot but um, I think this is just kind of a run-of-the-mill one it doesn't some of them have more information on the inside but this one doesn't other than it's got somebody's name. <laughs> anyway, five dollars for that. And I got this pretty, uh, looks like a silver covered box. I suspect it's not really silver, but it appears to be wood. It's covered with this embossed silver. And then, and then it's got satin and padded on the inside. Uh, it's got a stain. I'll have to try and get that out. It's got a lock, but no key. I may have a key to fit this. I don't know. But um, I paid $12 for that. Oh, goodness. I don't know what the children next door are doing, but they're screaming. And then I got this recipe box. It is a Shaw Walker. It's made of oak. It has the nice joinery on the corners. And it is chock full of recipes. And this is the Purdue Recipe File. Copyright 1927. Amy I. Bloy, Bloy, B-L-O-Y-E. And a little preliminary research, I could not find anything, but I thought, how interesting. So these recipes, they're not like somebody's family recipes. They're all uh, pre-printed, like general scorecard for cooked meat dishes. That's not what I want. I want to show you a recipe. Okay. Here is a recipe for fruit ice. But I thought, well, that would be fun because they, you know, you know they all date from the 1920s. So it would be interesting to see what was sort of standard middle class fare in the 1920s. Ooh, escalloped oysters. Uh, so anyway, that's a lot of recipes. And it's a, a nice big box. So, and I paid 
five dollars for that. I've had some good luck selling these in the past. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. These items are or soon will be for sale in my Etsy shop, which is vintagedazzle.etsy.com. The link to the shop is in the description. And if there's something that you see and you especially are interested in it, just uh, it's best if you email me. My email address is also in the description. And um, let me know that you're interested and I can, uh, I will get the item listed for you and let you know. In fact, I can let you know ahead of time. So if you want it, I can reserve it for you. Okay? All right. Uh, thanks. If, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and hit the little bell so you get notified when new videos come up. And yeah. Oh, comment if you like to. I love comments. Okay, thanks. Bye.